Welcome, and thank you for joining us today for our program. We're excited to bring you a virtual year in review of the Rodale Institute Southeast Organic Center. I'm Jeff Moyer, the CEO of Rodale Institute. Our goal at the Rodale Institute across all of our seven campuses in four different states is to be a destination for inspiration that grows the organic movement. I had hoped that I could be there in person, taking a tour and being able to share a conversation about our research projects. However, 2020 seems to have had other plans for us. Even though we can't host you on the farm, we're very proud of our accomplishments at the Southeast Organic Center, and we're looking forward to sharing them with you. This afternoon, we'll hear from many of our partners who have made our work in Georgia possible, as well as provide an update on the exciting research and outreach we've started there at our center in just over a little over a year of operation. We'll, we'll also discuss the impact that a center like this can have on the agricultural community of the Southeast and our future plans for our work here. And finally, we'll close with a discussion on how you can get involved with this impactful work and help us at Rodale Institute build an organic future. And then we'll open the floor to questions. So please be sure to add them in the Q&A box that you'll find at the bottom of your screen throughout today's discussion. First, let me share a little bit about Rodale Institute. Rodale Institute was officially founded in 1947. But we actually began a few years earlier than that when our founder, G.I. Rodale, wrote some words on a blackboard. He wrote, healthy soil equals healthy food equals healthy people. And with those few words, he initiated changes in the way people eat and farmers farm. Rodale Institute is a nonprofit research and education institution focused on growing the organic movement through rigorous research, farmer training, and consumer education. We are committed to farming using regenerative organic practices and studying the impact these production systems have on human and environmental health in order to do several things. We want to help farmers, researchers, and the public understand the benefits of regenerative agriculture. Here in Pennsylvania, we host our farming systems trial, which is the longest running side-by-side -side comparison of organic and conventional grain cropping systems in North America. We've been able to document that organic systems use 45% less energy, release 40% fewer carbon emissions, and have the potential to produce yields up to 40% higher in times of unstable weather patterns. Our other long-term trials, like the vegetable systems trial and the watershed impact trial, are studying the effects of organic crop management on food nutri nutrient density and water quality. Along the way, we found many people that agree with our philosophy. I guess you could say we've launched a movement. Today, we have the opportunity to work closely with amazing brands like Patagonia and Dr. Bronner's to create global action. And we are currently working with them and dozens of other brands friendly to the Institute to create the Regenerative Organic Certification Program a new high bar standard for products that build on the word organic to encapsulate regenerative practices in soil health, animal welfare, and social justice. And thanks to that movement, we've connected with amazing people like Rebecca and Ross Williams of Manyfold Farm, who invited us to grow our footprint from the home base of Pennsylvania across the country and start the important work of empowering farmers throughout the United States to change the way they utilize their resources. And one thing we know is that the world needs organic farmland. We take our responsibility to make that a reality very seriously. And we are investing our resources in many ways to make that possible. We help the people and partners across the country. Rodale Institute has created three satellite centers called regional resource centers to serve as hubs for organic research and education. These hubs serve the needs of farmers in their own regions and communities, conducting regionalized basic and applied research. Now in ordinary years, these centers would host field days where farmers can gather to network 
see our work firsthand, and speak to our researchers and farmers. Years of research at our own farm in Kutztown, Pennsylvania, have proven that organic farming can feed the world. In fact, it's the only long-term strategy we have to regenerate our soils and improve the quality of our food. Our regional resource centers allow us the opportunity to demonstrate th this science in different climates and soils, showing farmers in specific regions how it can be done. Through these efforts, our regional resource centers will help us achieve our goal of increasing the number of farms and farmers using organic production methods. By developing solutions for farmers and serving as a beacon of education and an aid to farmers considering transition to organic, we literally are changing the world. The Southeast Organic Center is one of our regional resource centers and Rodale Institute sees our work there as, very, as a very important part of our efforts to grow the organic community. Despite organic having grown to a $55 billion industry annually in the United States, Georgia has only approximately 140 certified organic farms representing just about five of five, half of 1% of organic farms in the United States. Now, historically, organic production has been low in the Southern states where warm weather increases the challenges we have with pests, disease, and even weeds when we are no longer relying on synthetic chemicals like pesticides and herbicides. However, according to, to the United States Department of Agriculture's National Organic Statistics Service, the South saw the most growth in organic farming from 2011 to 2016. For example, Alabama and South Carolina both saw increases of more than 200% since two, growth in, since 2011. And several other Southern states saw their certified organic farm count more than double in those five years. It is for this reason that we, are look, we, we went looking for a farm in Georgia and we were lucky enough to meet Rebecca and Ross Williams who offered to partner with us on their 300 acre manifold farm in Chattahoochee Hills. The property formerly used for cheese making includes pasture for livestock, cropping areas and forested land, making it an ideal location. And we are thankful for their partnership. I will be introducing Rebecca to you in a bit to share more of the story of their farm. But first, allow me to introduce Southeast Organic Center's farm team. I'm pleased to introduce you to our research director, Dr. Christy Wendelberger. Christy brings a wealth of knowledge as a trained plant ecologist with over 20 years of experience researching how and why plants grow in their environment. She obtained her PhD in 2016 from Florida International University and comes to Rodale ready to collaborate with Southeastern farmers performing farm-based research at our center and on their farms. Next, I'm equally pleased to introduce you to our farm manager, Garber Akers. Garber is a certified ecological horticulturalist an agroecologist, a farmer, and an educator. He specializes in multi-scale, diverse variety, sustainable crop production. Prior to coming to Rodale Institute's Southeast Organic Center, Garber worked as an ecological horticulture consultant and field production manager for a variety of farms. Garber trained in ecological horticulture at the Center for Agroecology and Sustainable Food Systems at the University of California Santa Cruz. And now both Christy and Garber will each provide an update on the work they have accomplished during our first year at the Southeast Organic Center. Thank you, Jeff. Hi, everyone. I want to welcome you to the Southeast Organic Center. I have a presentation that I'm going to give, so I'll get started on it. Um, welcome. Welcome virtually to the Southeast Organic Center. Uh, it's a weird year. We would love to have had a couple hundred people out on the farm and introduce you in person to our facilities and to our team and to be able to discuss what we can do for, for the farmers in the Southeast. But because this year is so strange, we are doing it this way virtually. Um, but we do welcome people to contact us and 
come and visit on a socially distanced way to, to get to know us and, and just reach out and let us know who you are in the region. Um, this is an, a view of, of our farm coming out to, it's the many fold farm, but where we're based this, um, here in Chattahoochee Hills, Georgia. We're here to help organic farmers. So our, our whole purpose is to listen to organic farmers, answer your research questions. Um, we're, we are open to collaborating on research projects that you are writing proposals for and are interested in. We're open to collaborating with you on projects that we are writing proposals for and interested in. Um, we are here to help organic farmers transition to organic agriculture. Uh, if you are on your way to transitioning or if you already are transitioned and you just have questions and needs, we're here to help with you, help you with that. Um, as I mentioned, on-farm collaborations, both here on the farm and as well as on, on our farm, as well as on yours, we're, we'll, we're completely open to helping you with experimental design, helping you with analysis and, and working with you on the questions that you have that will help you farm better. We can do short-term projects that can give you answers quickly and help you um, move forward in the work that you're, you need. For example, which varieties grow best in this climate if you're trying to change up the varieties of species that you have um, or that you work with long-term research demonstrating the value of organic farming on your health, the environment, and the world. Jeff mentioned um, the farming systems trials and the long-term research that's happening up in Pennsylvania. We plan to emulate that work here in the Southeast to be able to demonstrate the value of organic farming, that it's, it, it really is a holistic approach that's not just for the soil, not just for healthy eating, but for the whole, the whole environment. Collaborations with universities, extension agents, and other agricultural entities. Our hope is to bring together I, the, um, the Southeastern research and help disseminate that information to farmers. So we will collaborate with, with anyone who is interested in research, including including obviously the universities, extension agents, and, and other entities out there to help with, um, with getting that information to the farmer. And then, as I mentioned, information sharing via fact sheets, white papers, peer-reviewed journals. If you are a farmer and you wanted to research on your property, we can come and help you with that. And then in through that partnership, help analyze the data, help help create the the information and how to share that information with both the farming community and the scientific community. The programming we currently have and are planning to expand on at this facility is research, but I'm going to talk, I've already talked about it a little bit and I've got, I'm going to go into that a little bit more. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to go into that a little bit more in just a second. Um, I'm going to focus on education right now. We have our beginning farmer internship program that we already have going. Uh, Jules is our beginning farmer intern this year, and um, we will continue having farmers join us who are wanting to learn about farming in the region. Um, and just wanting to come from a new place and learn about farming in the Southeast. So that's different than the farming in the um, Southwest or in the Northeast. We are beginning in January, the Agricultural Research Internship Program, where we will have an intern come and work with um, me and other research staff on um, research projects and learn about how to do research in the agricultural setting. We plan to have workshops, field days, farmer trainings. Um, as soon as we can start opening up after the, these COVID times, we're going to be inviting people to the farm to have experiences where they can learn, um, in, invite experts to the farm to give workshops, give lectures, um, add, do in person, on the ground, um, in, you know, with your hands trainings and experiences. 
And then the consulting program that we are, we are starting up um, here in the Southeast, building on the consulting program that we already have in Pennsylvania. Um, we're gonna, to, it, the purpose is to help farmers transition to organic, farm um, visits to discuss farming needs and questions, um, connecting to resources and, and just helping the farmer figure out how to find resources that they need, and then connecting um, to researchers that can help answer their, their questions in a scientific way. The research facilities that we have at the um, at the Southeast Organic Center, we have um, the ability, I've already mentioned the experimental design, and that's really important because when you're doing, it's easy to put plants into the ground and you know that those plants grew or didn't grow, um, but when you can put it in in a way that's ex experimentally sound, and then you perform analyses to see what um, you can then really look at what is um, what's happening and whether there really is a difference in the way you grow uh, your okra in this way versus growing it in a different way. So, you, you know, using no-till versus till, then being able, so we can provide you with the ability to do that in an experimental way. We have growth chambers that we can um, grow plants in any time of year. So it doesn't matter if they're a, a winter species, a winter variety or a summer variety at any time of year, we can grow them. Um, we have greenhouses where we can do also controlled experiments inside of the greenhouse and 100 acres of farmland to be able to do experiments on in the ground farming. Um, Manyfold Farm is about 300 acres, but we have approximately 100 of pasture land that we can use to um, for experiments and to do research projects, including about eight, about 10 acres of land that we are not going to have be organically certified, so that we can do comparative studies between um, organic and not and conventional research. And can, excuse me, conventional farming. So one of the programs that we have right now, the research programs we have right now is the is looking at improving southeastern soil health. This program is in collaboration with Clemson University. We're looking at how cover crops and nutrient inputs impact the soil microbial community, the soil compaction and infiltration, yields, and fruit nutrient contents. Just as an example, I don't mean for anyone to look at this and to really to dissect this map here, but this is how we have it set up. Each of these plots are 18 by 20 feet. And within each of the plots, we have um, a larger conventional tillage block that has eight plots per block, and then a con um, conservation tillage block. Um, within each plot, we have a control group. We have some that are going to be planted with vetch for the cover crop, some that are planted with rye and vetch, some rye, vetch, and manure. Um, vetch and manure, just manure, just rye, just vetch. So it's, it's this whole combination that we're able to put together and see what happens when we grow tomatoes and cucumbers um, over time to the soil nutrient level, the soil microbial community, what happens to the yield of the vegetables and the nutrient content in the vegetables. Um, so the purpose is to um, be able to take these, once we, you know, once we have this done, we'll be able to analyze that data and really know what's happening um, from a scientific point of view to the soil nutrients. And this is what we can do for you um, and for other farmers in the region to help with that. So right now I'm gonna unshare my screen and I believe it's Garver's chance to start telling us a little bit about what's been happening on the farm and, and what he has going on. Garver, you need to unmute your screen. Yeah, I wish I was as good with computers as I can be with soil. That'd be wonderful. Thank you, Christy. I am Garber Akers, farm manager at the Rodale Institute Southeast Organic Center. 
Farming for me began in Ohio and California, but for the last 12 years, I found myself working here in the Southeastern United States in the capacity of being a farm manager and sometimes consulting on some unique small organic farming and other projects. Here in the Southeast, I quickly found that as farmers, we lacked a lot of the support and resources that I was more accustomed to around the Great Lakes and on the West Coast. Uh, and not enough farms, it seemed to me right away, were working together to create the viable markets strong enough to sustain profitable sales. However, in the last couple of years, I've seen a, a resurgence of interest as well as a new synergy, whether it's in Georgia where I've worked, Alabama where I've worked, Tennessee or North Carolina. It's a, an exciting time and I, I think we got here not too early and not too late. Uh, here at the center, we are in our first year and like any first year farm, uh, we're just getting accustomed to our soils and our microclimates. We're learning what equipment we need, what resources we have available. But we have managed to get a few projects going. Uh, first, we have a demonstration garden and a one acre plot where I've seen the highest organic matter levels of any field that I've broken in the Southeast. And that's, that's a bit refreshing. Uh, in the future, I hope to use that plot to demonstrate four different gardens showing two different types of bare cultivation techniques versus two different types of no tillage techniques and to see where we can go with that. But getting a little more serious in, into the research end, as Christy has described, we have begun this project with Clemson University, the Organic Transitions Project, which personally for me is an opportunity to change gears and really become more focused as a research-minded farmer. I'm a, a little too used to production and it's, a, it's definitely a new way of doing things and I'm excited to be a part of it. Um, we've also begun construction recently on a propagation greenhouse so that we will be able to in-house not only provide our own seedlings, but have a space to do research both indoors and outdoors from seed to finish. I'm very excited about that. Um, Really, uh, I, I think the, the thing I'm most excited about, though, is that we will be able to work with other farmers to take on new projects in the name of research and to answer the questions that a lot of farmers like myself in the Southeast have been asking for years. How can we work together better? How can we work together to create markets? How can we work together better to increase our resource pool? And, and really solve the problems that vegetable and other types of farming in the Southeast bring. Uh, by my experience, the Southeast is the most diverse part of the country I've seen in terms of microclimates, in terms of soil types. And, but for as many differences as the many farms I've seen in the Southeast have, we all have common, common uh, challenges and issues to overcome. Much of that in the name of resources, much of that in the name of what I've already mentioned, creating markets. We can work as hard as we want, but if we don't have the distribution chains, if we don't have the information available with how to get from beginning to end, we're not gonna be successful. So it's important to me that I can be here for other farmers, that we can trade information, that we can learn from one another to, to answer these questions and overcome these obstacles. Um, I really see my job here as a unique opportunity to help, to, to help in that capacity. As a farmer, I want to make it clear I am here for other farmers, and I really do look forward to the research, education, and outreach that we are just beginning to generate here. But more importantly, I really want to make a plea to other farmers directly. I understand the woes we've had with extreme weather conditions down here, with making these resources and information, other things more available to, to us in the farm community, and ultimately, how we can use that to impact not only our profitability, but the health of the region around us. Healthier consumers are gonna make healthier choices and are gonna come back to us for the ways we can support the food system. So I, I really hope we can get together and collaborate and ask the important questions and solve the important challenges that we in the Southeast have been dealing with the whole time. Now is the time in the Southeast to regenerate and replenish soils that have been overused and abused by weather, monocropping, and all the other things that we're, that we're having to overcome. I feel very privileged to be a part of this, not only as a farmer, but as someone who can hopefully commune with farmers 
and and really help this organization be all it can be now that it's extended its path, path into the Southeast. Um, before I go, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Rebecca and Ross Williams, as well as Wes Armstrong and the Manyfold Farm staff. Um, they have been, they have opened the door to our ability to be here. They have been wonderful hosts and been supportive since, uh, since we have so much on our plates and, and, and feel sometimes limited, although, although we're accomplishing more than we sometimes give ourselves credit for. Uh, I would also like to thank our own internal team, Dr. Christy Wendelberger, and our very essential intern, Jules Giuliano, without whom I'd be dealing with nothing but weeds in our demonstration plot, let alone helping me get through the day to day. Thank you everyone for joining us here today. Uh, I, I do apologize, I had a slideshow ready and I wasn't able to get it functioning. So bear, um, again, thank you. And I do hope that we can all come together as a community in many ways from Pennsylvania to Georgia and all the farmers down here that we can create this synergy that will make this a successful endeavor. It's very important to me and I know it's important to other farmers as well. Thank you very much. And now back to Jeff Moyer at the Rodale Institute. Thank you, Garber, and thank you, Christy. I hope all of you can see that we've made great progress in a very short period of time, and also you've had some, some meaningful impact at the same time. And, and you're right, Garber, it certainly does take a team. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce one of the very important and special people of that team, and our, our primary partner in this work, Rebecca Williams, without whom our work would not be possible. Rebecca is the owner of Manyfold Farm. She is a farmer at heart and in the past in practice. She is the primary philanthropist for our work. And I first met Rebecca at an organizational event hosted at Serenby by Steve Nigren, where Jeff Katch and myself laid out our vision for impact in the region. We asked one simple question of the group that was assembled there. I said, or Jeff Katch said, is there anyone in the room who would be willing to step up and help? Rebecca, sitting with her husband Ross in the front row, waved her hand in the air and said, we will, and she has. And so it is a great honor to introduce Rebecca Williams to share the history of Manyfold Farm and maybe tell us why she made the decision to partner with Rodale Institute. Rebecca, welcome. Hi, Beth. Can you all hear me? Thank you so much for that really lovely introduction. Um, so just to give you guys a little bit of background, um, my husband Ross and I, we started this farm back in 2009, where we ran it as a sheep dairy. We made farmstead cheese in large part to tell the story um, of the connection between soil, grass, animals, and human beings. The microbial through, through making cheese and through our experience working the land here, you know, the microbial life of the soil can be beautifully expressed through the flavors of those, that those microbes create in the cheeses when they're made from animals who live and depend on that soil. And so we really made uh, every effort to use our practice making cheese to help our customers understand the connection between soil health and human health. And you can sort of see from what Jeff has already said about the history of Rodale, we were aligned, even though we didn't know each other at the beginning, we were aligned with each other from the beginning. Um, when we found out uh, that Rodale was looking to expand their work to campuses and other parts of the country, we really did, we leapt the opportunity uh, to partner and really expand our efforts. Um, but for, for us, it is more about, it's, it's it's about, it's about more than drawing bright lines around the human links to the soil. It's really about farmer support. Um, that is something that our past as farmers has helped us to understand is how particularly in the Southeast, you know, farmers have a really hard time. There's, there's not a huge amount of, of support. We know uh, firsthand how incredibly hard farming is. You know, 14 hour days were normal for us and we often felt overwhelmed by having to cope with having to do it all, the growing, the manufacturing, the marketing, the record keeping, payroll, packing, shipping, repairing, all of it we, was on us. 
uh, and we quickly understood from our own experience as well as from what we saw happening with many of our fellow farmers that organic farming um, is a tremendous amount of underpaying, isolating work. Um, and we see this regional resource center as a means for finding the ways that regenerative organic farming can become easier, well-paying and connection-making work. Um, if it isn't, it will never be sustainable, no matter how much we want it to be for those already doing it. And more importantly, it will never catch on with the farmers who are working conventionally, who we have to bring aboard this process if it is truly to be sustainable over the long term. Um, for, for me, as well as for, for Ross, my husband, you know, that is the biggest and most exciting task of this project is to increase the number of regenerative and organic farms in the South. That means thinking big, being inclusive of all types of farms and farmers, fostering strong, meaningful partnerships with policymakers, universities, healthcare organizations, and like-minded advocates. We cannot do this work alone. Um, it's too much uh, and it's too important. Uh, one such partnership that we already have is with Georgia Organics, uh, an organization that is near and dear to my heart. I'm a current board member there. Uh, and I am delighted to introduce our executive director, Alice Rolls. Alice has been with Georgia Organics for the past 16 years, and she has led her team there in countless projects from the highly successful farm to school program to being pivotal in growing the number of organic farms in Georgia from fewer than 25 when she started to the nearly 150 we have now. So Alice, I'm gonna hand it over to you to tell us a little bit more about Georgia Organics and why you're excited about this resource center. Thanks, Rebecca, and just kudos to you and Ross for really just spearheading a tremendously exciting opportunity for, for Georgia Organics, but also for the entire South. And um, I just want to relay our, our excitement at Georgia Organics, but also the excitement of our, our limitless partners out there in the community who also are excited about this new development for the South. And we're really glad that you picked Georgia to, to be in. And so Rebecca and Ross, thank you so much for making that happen. Um, just real quick, for those of you who don't know who Georgia Organics is, we, we've been around, uh, actually have roots dating back to the 70s as a peer-to-peer -peer farmer association, um, but we've been a nonprofit for 23 years, and our mission is to connect organic food from Georgia farms to Georgia families. We focused on three areas, the primary one being farmers um, and trying to increase the number of organic and regenerative farmers and farms in the state. Um, as well as what Rebecca mentioned, we've been leading the farm to school movement with a variety of partners um, and also pushing local food system development at the community level through our Georgia Food Oasis project. Um, our primary lens with, with farmers as our backbone of our work, um, because we know if, if we don't have good farmers that can survive and thrive, we can't do all the other work that we want to do. Um, is farmer prosperity? How do, we, how do we have whole farmers, not just from a standpoint of successful business models, but also, um, you know, in livable wages, but, you know, farmers who can have health insurance, farmers who can take a vacation. Um, what makes us whole as humans? How can we provide that for our farmers? So we look at everything from um, QuickBooks uh, training workshops to health insurance programs that we have currently with Kaiser Permanente um, to hosting our annual conference. It's a seminal event to bring farmers together to share information um, as well as with other partners and researchers. Um, we started a program in 2015 that um, was called, the, at the time it was called the 100 Organic Farms Campaign with the Commissioner of Agriculture here in Georgia um, at that time, we had about 70 organic farmers in the state. Um, and this was an effort to really try and mobilize our leadership, also just try and reduce the barriers for farmers um, from going organic. I'm proud to say that, you know, within about 14 months, we were able to reach our goal of moving from 70 to 100 organic farms in the state. And so with the Commissioner of Agriculture, we, did, we launched the 200 Organic Farms Campaign. Um, so since 2015, we started that, we have doubled the number of organic farms in this state, um, but it's still a drop in the bucket. It still represents, you know, less than 1% of agriculture 
in this state as, as is the, the case for our country. Um, and so we have so tons of potential. Agriculture is our number one industry here in the state. And so we're excited about the models that Rodale as a trusted, experienced, historical leader in the organic, sect organic agriculture sector to have those expertise down here in the South, um, looking at, you know, how do we build soil health? How do we do with these weed pressures, the climate challenges that are unique to this region? Um, and we've been under-resourced. We've been underrepresented. Um, we have lacked institutional leadership. Um, so to have this trusted institution come down here and help us with that, uh, not only for our existing sustainable organic farmers, but also for the bridge building that needs to happen with the very huge conventional agricultural sector. So I look forward to working um, with Rodale. Uh, George Organics stands prepared to assist Rodale at however we can in terms of bringing farmers um, to the site, um, to involving you all in our annual conference um, and various programs. We're really, really excited from the beginning farmer pipeline to the research um, and the educational opportunities. Um, I, I just really are, am thrilled to have you all here. And uh, on behalf of Georgia Organics, welcome and uh, consider us a very strong ally. And I'm gonna turn it over now to uh, Jeff Katch, who's the Chief Impact Officer at Rodale Institute to bring us close to home here. Great, thank you so much, Alice. Uh, what an honor it is to have the opportunity to speak with each and every one of you. Uh, again, my name is Jeff Katch. I serve as the Chief Impact Officer at Rodale Institute, helping to ensure that we are maximizing all of the work being done across Rodale Institute's campuses around the United States and around the world to ensure that their impact is being made and helping to have uh, positive ramifications and outcomes for farmers and human and planetary health. I have the rare opportunity to actually be down here in Georgia, sitting about two miles right now from uh, the Southeast Organic Center, and I've had the privilege of participating in several meetings over the last 48 hours. And I can tell you that there's a real passion and energy and a sense of hope in the air. Um, and I think as we emerge from uh, some of the tension that we've all been facing over the last several months with an election cycle and pandemic and other tensions, I'm, I'm just delighted by the hope that I feel by stepping foot on Medifold Farm and, and hearing all the collective voices come together. This morning we gathered with between 15 and 20 uh, leading farmers here in the state of Georgia, uh, some on the small scale and some on the largest scale across all dimensions of agriculture. And there was such a uh, cohesion that formed around the table as we surveyed the group and began to ask deep questions around how we can heal agriculture and human health. And I just sense such a collective spirit. And I sense that on this call here this afternoon as well. And so I want to bring us home here and um, really begin to call all of us to, to action. I think that the only way we have been here and been able to start the work we've embarked on was because of the response by one person sitting in a room a year and a half ago. And I believe that there's no mistake that we've all gathered of, uh, here today to, to talk about how we can expand that work. There's 90 of us from all over the world on this call. And uh, as Jeff Moyer alluded to at the outset, there was a question that was posed to that room that night when he and I came down to Georgia to begin this journey. And the question was, who is in? Who's in? And there, there, we cannot, we simply cannot do the work. All the great work that Christy and Garver and Jeff have outlined along with partners like Alice and many other great organizations, we simply cannot do it without your support, your support. Uh, it's not just uh, the volunteering. Uh, we need help getting the word out. We need help reaching across divides to the conventional agricultural landscape. We need your help bringing other farmers into this conversation. But most of all, we need your philanthropic support. We, we as a nonprofit entity, we cannot do what we do. Our mission cannot move forward without philanthropic support. So I'm imploring each and every one of you to mindfully and prayerfully consider how you might get behind what we're doing. And I can assure you that the impact will be felt uh, and that agriculture has an opportunity at this moment in history to be a great healer. Garver alluded to that, that the soil can be the thing that unites us. And I believe that our moment has come, organics moment has come, and we are here 
at this moment in history to create history in the Southeast through the work of Rodale Institute in partnership with many other organizations. So um, at the conclusion of today's webinar, an email will be going out outlining all of the needs, um, but I can tell you the needs are great. We have many ambitions from a research perspective, from a programming, a consulting perspective, an education perspective. There's events we wanna host, there's research that needs to be done, and uh, none of it can be done without your support. So I'll end by asking who's in. And if you are interested in getting involved, please message me. You can message me directly in the chat uh, or offline uh, through uh, Rodale Institute's channels. So with that, uh, we are gonna open it up now to a QA. and uh, I've been delighted to see all the questions pour in. And so we're gonna open up that, the last 20 minutes of our time together with Q&A. Thank you so much. And please consider joining us in Healing the World. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jeff. Uh, Tammy, are you going to host some questions for us? I am. I am, absolutely. Um, so we have several questions from the audience, and we'll get to them as, as much as we can. And if we aren't able to answer all of your questions today, we'll follow up with um, a link to a Google document with answers to your questions. So our first question comes from Marshall, and he says he lives in Atlanta, but hopes to start a farm in South Carolina, probably around Greenville. He's asking, what's the best way as a beginning farmer to interact with, take advantage of the offerings by state ag agents and with research universities like Clemson? And um, I was thinking maybe, uh, Jeff, do you, would Jeff Moyer, would you like to address that question or is that better directed to Christy? Well, I, I think maybe multiple people will jump in on this question. And I think it's a question that's going to require a, a lot more thought and time than we would have uh, the ability to talk about today, even though, I mean, it is a fantastic question and many people find themselves in that same uh, position. The, what's really changing with agriculture today is that there are opportunities for help. In the past, it was more difficult than it is today. I mean, starting a farm is always a challenge. It's a challenge in terms of uh, capital investment. It's a challenge in terms terms of getting the knowledge that you need. But, uh, you know, uh, as, as we've been talking about throughout the course of our conversation today, you can see from this screen that there are partners there, whether it's Georgia Organics, uh, you know, or there's there's folks in uh, in the South Carolina that can help, or North Carolina. Uh, there's uh, the Rodeo Institute. While we are in Georgia, you notice that we call this a regional resource center. So we're able to cross state lines and go wherever it is we need to go to have the impact that we want to have and can help bring our consultancy. We have a, a farm consultancy now arm at Rodeo Institute. And in 2021, we will uh, most likely, again, with your help, we'll be positioning a consultant at our facility there in Chattahoochee Hills that can, again, cross borders and go across state lines and help farmers directly uh, sitting in your kitchen or in your farm office, working through the, the, the challenges that you might face on your individual farm to, to get you up and running. Uh, there, but there's a lot of hope, a lot of work to do, uh, but a lot of team members that are there to support uh, his effort. Um, in addition to all the things that Jeff just said, I would suggest don't be afraid to put yourself out there. If you have questions and, you know, find your local extension agent and just email them. Call them up and talk to them. Don't be afraid to um, ask these questions. Don't be afraid to contact us. Um, it is, uh, you know, just people are there to support you. And so, you, you have to put yourself out there and find them. And when, when you find somebody, speak to them. They'll lead you to someone else. They'll, and eventually you will, you're gonna be able to find what you need. Great, thank you, Jeff, and, and thank you, Christy. Our next question comes from Robert. Um, he's asking, will we be training regional extension agents as well in order to increase our outreach potential to farmers? Yeah, uh, of, of course, we're, 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 we work on a train the trainer program. Uh, we're initiating and, and working on a new train the trainer program that will focus primarily on regenerative organic as we try to expand that uh, certification standard across the country and across the Southeast region. Um, 
we, as I mentioned, we will have our own consultants on site. Now, depending on how things work out with, with donations and philanthropic work, as Jeff Catch mentioned, our goal is always to be able to put a consultant onto anybody's farm, regardless of their ability to pay or support that, that information exchange. Uh, we have a project here in Pennsylvania. I know that doesn't help down there, but in Pennsylvania, where we can put a consultant on every farm in the state for free because we've had help from the state. We'll work on programs like that in Georgia as well and, and in South Carolina, North Carolina, so that we can get folks the help that they need. Uh, but we're always interested in training other folks uh, that train the trainer model to bring that information across a broad swath of landscape. Uh, let me step back. Rodale Institute has all, all the work that we've done over the last seven decades has been done in partnership with other organizations. We don't do anything by ourselves or on our own. That's why I was particularly happy to hear uh, Alice tell us we were welcome in Georgia. We never go where we're not welcome. And we felt welcome there from day one, not only by Rebecca on that particular farm, but by the entire state and the farmers in that community. And that's an exciting opportunity. So we're going to take advantage of that and, and move our mission forward. Great. Thank you, Jeff. So the next question um, comes from an anonymous attendee who asks, does the Rodale Institute work with or collaborate with Dr. Elaine Ingham on the program she founded, the Soil Food Web Program? We work with we work with lots of research scientists across the country and around the globe. Uh, Dr. Ingham, at one point in her career, was actually on faculty here at Rodale Institute. She is no longer currently uh, on our staff, but she was for a number of years uh, on our faculty here. So we we continue to work with Elaine Ingham. I mean, she has her own projects, her own work, and we stay connected. I just spoke with her uh, two days on Saturday. Uh, we were both part of a workshop in. For the Hawaii Hawaiian Farmers Union, where they had a conference on Saturday, and so we shared the, the stage there. So we work with Elaine Ingham, but she has her own uh, classes and teaches that are totally disconnected from Rodale. And, and of course, where our paths intersect, we work together. Thank you, Jeff. Um, the next question comes from Marshall, and he said, in the last. Rodale event he attended, it was stated that a very large percentage of farms presently owned by 65 year olds will come onto the market over the next 20 years. What are the present trends versus your wishes for farm ownership, consolidation of ownership, expansion of ownership, farm sizes growing or shrinking and opportunities for future family farmers? Well, that's a conference and a workshop all in itself. Your your guests are asking very, very astute questions. Yeah, we did mention probably at that workshop, because it's true, not just in the United States or not just in Georgia or the Southeast, but across the world, we have a an aging farm population, farm managers. The average age of a farm manager in the United States is over 65. I mean, is almost 60, but if you look at the... Uh, uh, the median age, it's over 65. So we have six times as many farmers over the age of 65 as we have under the age of 35. That's a challenge, of course. But it also means that over the next 20 years, 50% of the farmland is going to change management. Some of that will change ownership. Some will just change management. Uh, the average age of a landowner in the United States is 85 because we have a lot of uh, wealthy widows that own farmland. Uh, that's just the facts. Uh, about three quarters of the farmland in the United States is actually rented. Farmers typically only own uh, 25 to 30 percent of the land that they farm in much of the country. So there's a lot of opportunities there. What you'll notice is uh, a lot of investment organizations are moving into this space and looking at the uh, farmland uh, purchase. Uh, that can be good, that can be bad. Uh, it depends on how it's managed and how they get the uh, eventually get the ownership of that land into the hands of the farmers who are managing it. But, but there's there's challenges, of course, but great opportunities. Um, our next question comes from Dawn. Um, and she says, as research and programs get started, is, is there a space where Black farmers are specifically getting priority as a way to build up communities with the most need for fresh locally grown? 
Well, I'm not as familiar with the programs in, in the Georgia region. I would say that Rodale Institute is working with one of our board members, uh, Dr. Jennifer Taylor, to create programs specifically geared towards black and indigenous farmers. I know, Christy, you've met with uh, Dr. Taylor there at our facility, or, or, or at least uh, because of COVID uh, virtually. And uh, I, I have a call scheduled with her later this week to begin to move some of those programs forward at our facility there at Manyfold Farm so that we can incorporate much of that dialogue and, and the conversations around that to create priority programs for uh, black farmers. Maybe you have hey. something to add, Christy. Yeah, just, I mean, mimicking what you were saying, Jeff, that that's, that is a priority for us. Um, we, you know, we're just starting to work with, work in that direction. So, if you have ideas, if you have connections, please email me, connect with me, and and we can begin that. But that is that's definitely a priority for our work here. Great, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Christy. Our next question comes from Ursula, who asks, "How do people in other southeastern states who are trying to organize regional efforts to make contact to talk about opportunities to collaborate? How can they reach out to us?" Well, certainly, uh, Christy and Garver are in that community, and they're available, uh, well, probably 12 hours a day. I was going to say 24-7, but that would be wrong. They both have a life outside of Rodale, I suspect. But You can email 24-7. You can email 24-7, for sure. We'll uh, reply during work. In the short term, Rodale Institute is viewing this as a regional resource center, not a Georgia resource, resource center. Happen to be located on a wonderful location there in Georgia, from which we will reach out and build relationships and partnerships across multiple states. The, the challenge, of course, is financial when, when you want to bring a, a regional resource center into a, into a site. If there is somebody who is really interested in talking about that in a very specific nature, uh, they should reach out directly to me or Jeff Catch, and either one of us or both of us will respond uh, as quickly as we can to host a conversation around what that might look like or what the questioner's vision is for uh, creating uh, time and space in, that, in a particular region happy to talk about that. Our next question comes from Jack and Jack asks, what does the ideal conscious consumer look like? And is it enough to simply support local farms directly and support Georgia Organics or the Rodale Institute through philanthropy? Well, maybe Jeff Katz, maybe you want to jump on that since it's a question around philanthropy, but uh... Uh, and while you think about that, let me just let me just say that uh, it's not enough. It's a start, and we suggest starting there because we can have huge impact and make a big difference. Uh, buying local is great, but only in so much as you have a responsibility to interact with the farmers you're supporting to help them uh, over the challenges that the challenges that they may face on their individual farms to transition from conventional to organic. Uh, most folks don't buy 100% of what they eat or wear locally, or they buy a percentage of that, and that's great. We need to support farms if we want them in our community, uh, but we need to change the way food is produced around the world so that we can have a greater impact on, on all of our personal health and, of course, the health of the planet. But Jeff, you probably have more to add. Yeah, I would say that um, I think it's imperative uh, now more than ever that each and every one of us, I believe, as citizens has a responsibility to get to know a farmer, you know, to have a relationship with a farmer in their community that is stewarding soil in a way that uh, we espouse at Rodale Institute. You know, there are these intrepid farmers out there that uh, need markets. In fact, a, a, a large portion of our conversation this morning with a group of farmers, their greatest challenge is connecting with you, the consumer. So we as consumers vote three times a day with what we put on our plate. And each and every one of us has a responsibility to change our, con our consumption patterns around food, uh, to step out of the grocery aisles and, on and step foot onto local farms. There's amazing farms right in your community here in Georgia and all over the country where we can have one-to-one -one relationships with farmers uh, and farmers markets. And our, by, by voting with our dollar, we're helping to build viable uh, career pathways for these great farmers like Garver that are out there every day on the front lines trying to fight for a better food future for all. 
Yeah, I don't want to speak for Alice, but I'm sure if people reach out to Georgia Organics, that you'd be happy to put them in touch with one of those 148 organic farmers that are in the state that would love to make, make contact with potential customers. Yeah, you can just check out our good food guide online to make some of those connections or just call uh, call us at Georgia Organics and we'll let you know what farms are in your, your area if you happen to be in Georgia. Okay, um, that's great. I, we have some additional questions, but we do have some closing comments. So I think uh, we'll follow up if we haven't answered at your question today, we'll follow up with a link to a spreadsheet where we have uh, provided answers. And we thank you all for your questions. Um, so now I'll bump the, the discussion back to Jeff Moyer for his closing comments. Jeff? Well, thank, thank you, Tammy. Thank you to all of our presenters. And, and especially thank you, Alice, for welcoming, welcoming us to your state and Rebecca to your personal farm. More importantly, I really want to thank all of you who have joined us and taking time out of your busy schedule to join us on this journey and learn about our first year's progress at Rodale Institute's Southeast Organic Center, as well as helping us discuss plans for the future. Here at Rodale Institute, we're investing in farmers. We're working every day to grow organic acreage in the United States. In 2021, our farmer consultancy team and our regional resource centers will be working with farmers across the country and around the world to transition to organic. We're developing an online education platform for farmers to be used to access our research and training from their own farms, wherever they are. And as a show of solidarity, we are investing $2 million of our own endowment with an investment partner to provide farmer-friendly leases, mortgages, and lines of credit for farmers transitioning to organic. The work that we do today would not happen without the generous support of people just like you. We are grateful that you are on this journey with us and value the work that you do to carry on these conversations with your friends, family, and circle of influence. After hearing about our work, as Jeff Katz mentioned, and if you're so inclined, you can make a donation by visiting rodaleinstitute.org backslash donate. We wish we could have had the opportunity to show you around the farm in person, but we'd like to close with a short video of Manyfold Farm. On behalf of the entire board and the staff of Rodale Institute and our very special partners here with us today, thank you for joining us. Be safe and please stay healthy and well. Thank you, everyone.